Hey, I'm Phil Torres here with Dr. Susan Finkbeiner. And Susan, what do you study? Study tropical butterflies. And what is in your hand right now? I have one of the world's largest butterfly nets. One of the longest butterfly yep. nets in the world. In the world. <laughs> Okay, I'm not gonna lie, Susan. I'm a little bit jealous of your coolest butterfly net ever. I have good news for you, Phil. We've got one for you, too. What? <laughs> Let's go catch some butterflies. Yeah, I'll show you how it works. Studying butterflies for a living is not exactly what you think. Sure, there may be times when you're skipping through a field or working away in a lab, but other times it looks like this. Rivers, rocks, waterfalls, jungle. As an entomologist, Dr. Finkbeiner studies hard to find butterflies which sometimes live way up in the canopy. And to reach them, you're gonna need a bigger net. This type of research is critical to understanding the complexities of the tropics. And it's not without its challenges. So now, let's put these nets to work. Each of these rolls um, actually represents a five foot extension. So you start at the top. So, so how many feet are we talking? Each 25 one feet plus 25. a couple extra with the net. You're looking at close to 30 feet. Yeah. Oh, there's net. a butterfly right there. Okay, oh. let's get this thing up. <laughs> Am I doing this right? Here you go. I feel like this is amateur hour. No, you, now you got one more after that one. one. Like, my arms are really tired. Nobody said catching butterflies was an easy job. It okay, is not. This, you gotta be in good shape. This is my last one here, right? All right. I feel so powerful. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. You notice it weighs a lot once it starts to tilt. Some yeah. people need an anchor the net on the, on the uh, ground, ground okay. somewhere, and then you can kind of maneuver it quite easily this way. Wow. Yep. That's awesome. But if the butterfly is a little too high, you got to lift it up, and you have to be skillful. <laughs> Get that butterfly. Oh, I almost just fell over. So I'm already having like way too much fun, and we haven't even caught any butterflies. So I think it's time to catch some butterflies. So butterfly like this, you've written the number, yep. you've got the data, then what do you do? We just let it go and uh, if we collect it again we're able to record that information later and have information on the butterfly population. Here. So let's say you collect it like a mile away and it's number 45, you will know something about blue morphos. Exactly, we will know information about their habitat range and uh, depending on where we collect them or what time of day, that's also very important. So I want to release this guy, but I want to release it in style. You ready? Yeah, let's okay. do it.
We are on the eastern slope of the Andes Mountains at the Wild Sumaco Biological Station. And this is also where you do your research? Yep, this is another home away from home for me. All right, so we put the nets down. I think it's time to talk some science. Sounds good. Let's do it. Okay, Dr. Susan Finkbeiner. So I've known you for <laughs> 10 years, and I think what we've always shared is this love of butterflies. Yes. So I want to hear from you, why butterflies? You know, I have had that question asked to me over 100 times, probably. Uh, Let's make it I 101. Cannot, okay, I, I cannot give you a good reason. I have always been fascinated by them. I've always wanted to work with butterflies and always had this um, deep curiosity for them. So what are the questions that come to your mind when you think about butterflies? Most people just see them and they're like, oh, that's a pretty uh -huh. thing. For you as a scientist, you have questions about them. Yeah, well, I want to know why do butterflies look the way they do? Why do they do the things they do? And what makes them so important to our community and um, to the entire environment? So part of answering those questions, you get to basically have the most fun job ever and play with the longest butterfly yes. net ever. Yes. So we're uh, actually interested in using butterflies to measure drivers of biodiversity, um, not just in the tropics, but across an entire latitudinal gradient. So what does that mean when you say drivers of biodiversity? Yes. So we, uh, in a nutshell, we want to answer uh, questions regarding why are animals and plants so much more diverse in the tropics than in the temperate areas? And butterflies are actually really great animals to use to test this question. They're found all over the globe. Um, and their diversity kind of follows this pattern of having more species in the tropics and less species in the temperate area. So basically, when you look in your backyard in North America, you will see maybe a few dozen species of butterflies, if you're lucky. Yeah. But here in this jungle backyard, you are seeing hundreds yes. of species. And that is what you're trying to figure out. Yes, uh, it's still a mystery today uh, why you find so many more species in the tropics than you do in the temperate areas. And we do have um, some more modern um, scientific techniques to be able to use to measure this, whether it be with uh, molecular work. It's, uh, we've even come up with better ways of collecting, like you've seen with the nets. So, so you're working out here mm -hmm. in the field, way remote in the tropics, but you also work yeah. in the lab. Yes. And so there's this like balance, and then you're uh -huh. also writing a lot. Yeah. So that tell me about your life as a scientist. It's it's this for me. It's a very um, interesting cycle where you go through um, months at a time in the field, collecting your data, doing your projects. You come back, you're analyzing your data. You might be working with specimens to get your molecular um, tissue sequence. We want to do some RNA sequencing, so it involves. Um, analyzing data, doing lab work, and then you want to write everything up into this big story that's going to tell the world what you found and why it's important. Okay, so I just want to throw out two things here. For one, how many days in a row did you just go without internet? <laughs> uh, a month. A month, a month straight without, without, any without internet. internet. Which, to the average <laughs> American, that is like a huge amount of time. But when you do have internet in the field, I gotta say, guys, her Snapchat game is insane. The way that you use Snapchat when in the rainforest, to me, that is like, I love it. I think it's so cool. I'll let you, I'll keep you informed every time I'm going to the Please field. Please do. And guys, if you have Snapchat, you should follow her. It's the best. So I gotta say, not a bad view right here. We're here in, this is Sumaca Volcano. Yep, it sure is. And it's incredible. Here's some of the locals coming by on a motorcycle. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for letting me play with your giant butterfly net. And no, you were great. You're natural you. at it. Hey, you You're know, know I may have caught it. the first morph of the day, but don't worry about it. Actually, I caught one before you. You just didn't she, see it. I did. I did right after breakfast. She's she's I'm she's not, the butterfly I'm queen. Not bluffing. <laughs> she's the Beyonce of butterflies. Oh well, thank you. This is a courtesy <laughs> for you. <laughs> nice. Right. Good job. Team butterfly. Yeah. Don't we worry about it. <laughs>